Okay, so we'll talk. We'll talk a little about culture in a sec. But it sounds like uh, uh, partly because I was late, partly because uh, uh, I put that stuff on the board. You guys were wondering about logistics, so we'll talk logistics for a second while we look at uh, uh, the un unholy hell that is Bourbon Street. That is a horrible part of New Orleans. It's the worst part of New Orleans, but that's what everybody thinks about. Um, so today, uh, today is Mardi Gras, and that means Fat Tuesday. So everybody in New Orleans is Catholic, whether they're Catholic or not, everybody's culturally <laughs> Catholic. And so Mardi Gras is the same thing as Carnival, as, as all these different celebrations around the world for, history, for regions of the, of the planet that have a strong Catholic heritage, and it has to do with Lent. So Lent starts tomorrow, which is Ash Wednesday, and that's a 40-day period of reflection and sort of, you know, uh, uh, giving up things and, and you know meditating and stuff like that and so crying and stuff like that so and, and, and that of course 40 days 40 days is the day uh, 40 days Jesus goes in the desert and hangs out for 40 days um, so uh, Easter is the end of that so Easter is the most sacred time in the Christian worldview and so really really important time more important than Christmas although everybody thinks Christmas is one of the most important time that's the most important time. And so this is a, this is a period where folks are going to, you know, reflect and, and take stock of their life and all this and that. So, so that means some amount of sacrifice so that you can be more focused and stuff. And so this, Fat Tuesday, is the last day before you have to give up stuff. And so that's where this partying and dancing and celebration and food and all that stuff comes from. So we're looking at Bourbon Street, which is sort of the epicenter of what the outside world sees as New Orleans. And uh, this is not New Orleans by any stretch of the imagination. This is the worst part. I, would, I will strongly encourage you guys to run away from Bourbon Street as fast as you possibly can because it's just horrible, horrible, ugly liquor and frat guys getting stupid and, and just silly stuff like that. So there's way better parts. But um, what we see right now is we look from this webcam, we see all these people, uh, well, they're consuming alcohol, of course, for a sleep, but, um, but they all have these beads on them, right? And so beads are a key part of Mardi Gras. We'll talk about that in a second. Um, but uh, there, there are no more parades going on right now, so I can't show you any live shots of parades. So we have this guy going in the background. Uh, logistics stuff. So I sent out, uh, so you guys, everybody's cell phone, everybody's, uh, cell phone numbers. Mm -hmm. So do me a favor, pop those in your phones. If you haven't done them yet, please do that tonight. That's one of those things some people forget to do, and then we're in the middle of forest, and I say, yeah, hey, call, call uh, Cooper, see if he's okay or something. You're like, well, I don't have Cooper's number, right? So, so add those into your cell phone so everybody can, everybody can text everybody. Welcome, you guys. We're just, we're just starting. Um, so apologies that I was busy uh, getting my plumbing fixed in my house today. Um, but uh, anyway, so, so yeah, so make sure you, that email I had has everybody's uh, email address, uh, well, <coughs> everybody's text cell phone numbers, please add those in so everybody has them on your phone. Everybody should have mine in there. Uh, that's the most important one. If you guys get stuck somewhere or need help, whatever, you guys can, can hit me up. Also, John and Tom's cell phones are in that list. So throw everybody's uh, cell phones in your uh, contact list. The other thing is last week we, we added in Zello. Um, a few folks weren't here, everybody else was here, so we got on the Zello, so that's great. So if you guys did not get on Zello before you leave tonight, let me make sure you're on had the instructions in the group, et cetera, on, on that uh, sheet. Uh, there's a, couple, a few other apps. So before we totally disappear tonight, I want you guys to install those. You might already have some of them. Um, uh, Arc Collector, uh, Survey123, some apps that we um, will use when we're out about uh, collecting data in New Orleans. And then um, the other one is WordPress. That's one thing we haven't talked about. So some of you guys that are, that are ESRM folks or, or old ESRM folks that are in Capstone, older students, uh, know about WordPress. Um, but this is essentially our blog. So you guys will be blogging. So uh, you do not need to use the app to do the blog. But since most of you guys are going to be mostly on your phones when we're moving around, that's the easiest way to do it. So just a quick note. Um, on that is uh, uh, those of you that do have, you do use CI keys right now, this is a different process. So the CI keys is how you guys can access your blog. You can use this WordPress app to, app to, to post to your blog too, but when you guys have your, if this, is, if this makes no sense to you guys, you can ignore it. 
which is just for the people that, that already are a little bit familiar. If you guys do have CI keys access, uh, hmm. I don't know what the hell that is. That's paying the bills, I guess, is what that is. How, how can I not kill this? I hate, I hate watching ads. Okay, forget that. We'll do this. Um, so uh, anyway, so so even if you guys have your own uh, CI Keys account, because you don't own this website, because I own this website, you can't access it the typical way you do um, through my CI. So if you log on through my CI, you get to your access. So this is the way um, you access it any other WordPress site from anywhere else in the world, uh, which is you need to type in the, the WP admin, that link I, I sent you, and there's a, a, a step or two we need to do the first time to get you logged on, and then you'll be good to go. But once you're good to go, you can post on the fly. You can, you can do a, 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 a picture. You can do a, a couple sentences, etc. I want you guys to all do at least a quick little post, and by a quick post, I mean like a picture and a sentence uh, at least once a day. And then, as we do different things, um, say we're going to the, the uh, Lake Bourne surge barrier on this one day, I'll pick two of you guys and go, hey, you guys do a blog post on this, this thing, or the cooking school, or the this, or the that, or whatever. And so for those longer term, or for, for those more in-depth things, not just a, a, a snap a picture and, and throw something up there, but a bit more, you know, two, three, four paragraphs, a little bit of stuff, as we're doing the tour or whatever it is, Talk with people, take down some dates and names and get some, some you know, information from those folks. And anytime we do a post for WordPress for our blog, you should have some piece of multimedia, right? So typically that means a photo, could mean a video or other things, but, but um, that's gonna be the easiest way. So if you guys aren't familiar with that, I, I'll, I'll show you after how to, how to get on there, et cetera. Um, and then uh, uh, we, We'll be using some of our um, uh, GPS locators, which use, um, which will have a paired iPhone or, or iPod with them. But if that kind of goes screwy, you guys should also download the Bad Elf app, which is a way to communicate with our mobile. Um, again, these are these apps are all at the bottom, and they all work on whatever platform you have, iPhone or Android or whatever. Um, uh, the only one that doesn't work on Android is the one I suggest you don't have to get, but it's Motion X GPS. That's a really useful one for if we're trying to figure out a position or trying to mark something and come back to it and navigate. Um, having looked at all, for the iPhone at least, all the different GPS apps, that's sort of the most field friendly uh, one for the kind of work that we do. So uh, download those apps if you haven't, add everybody's info in there. Uh, last bit of logistics is um, leaving. So leaving two Thursdays from now. Um, we will be meeting here, meaning at the bottom of the stairs here at Sierra Hall. So uh, logistics for that are gonna be you um, uh, show up with your bag, right? So your one bag, your one, your one bag we're gonna check. You can also have a day bag, you know, backpack, purse, that camera bag, that kind of thing. But we're only gonna check one bag per person. And then we're gonna have several crates of transect tapes and in sticky traps and various, various things we'll need. Um, and so you guys will be at the base of the stairs, all good, half asleep, I'll be here, I'll open the, open the door. If you guys wanna hit the bathroom or whatever, you can do that. Um, and then we'll basically be waiting down there and Roadrunner shuttle will come up in two vehicles because for whatever reason, Roadrunner is strange these days. We can't seem to all fit in one van. They, they don't do that really anymore. So anyway, so we're, we're gonna fit into uh, two vans, load up, and then go straight to LAX. Boom, we'll get there. Plenty of time. We're leaving early because of morning traffic, right? So we're leaving there, so we're totally fine. Um, we'll get to LAX, uh, offload, get everything. We'll go check in. We'll go get through security. And then once we're through security to the gate, then you guys can go and get your own lunch or, or breakfast or buy some neck pillows or whatever you need to do for the flight. Um, Tom will join us there since he lives in LA. Um, and then as I said before, John will join us a few days later in, in New Orleans. Um, so uh, you guys should all be here by 515. 
right? Because we're gonna have to come up here. We're gonna have to. There's be. There will, I guarantee there'll be some kind of chaos. There'll be something weird. It rains or something, whatever. And I'll need you guys to help me bring some crates down and this and that and check everything and make sure we're all good. Get on the Roadrunner. All, all that stuff is is good to go. Um, uh, vehicles. How are you guys getting here? So it's up to you guys. If you want to have a bud, a good friend drop you off early, right? A good friend. They can drop you off, and that's cool. Um, if you guys, if you want to have your, or if you live in the dorms, whatever, you just walk over. If you guys are um, uh, going to drive your own vehicle, it's all good. You know, so drive up, uh, dump your stuff here. Make sure somebody's here to watch it. But you know, dump your stuff off, and then you can go park wherever. Um, so wherever your student parking permits or regular parking permits work normally, they'll, that's where you should park, right? Ideally, we should probably all park in the same area. So something like the lot over by Modoc or whatever, doesn't matter to me, it's wherever you guys, where it's convenient for you. Ideally, park all our cars together. Again, don't absolutely have to, but it's helpful. And then once we're all done and we've gotten all the chaos of getting the, the crates down to the first, uh, to the bottom of Sierra Hall and all that kind of good stuff, and we're on the vans and we're heading towards LA, then we'll call the cops. And we're gonna say, hey, uh, we have four cars are in lot, whatever the hell that lot number is, right? We're, we're in the Modoc lot. And it is a, a white Toyota Camry and a blah, 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 and tell them whatever the four or five cars are. And we let them know and they know to check them for us. So then, obviously, Thursday there's classes, Friday there's classes, no big deal. But then come Saturday, it's spring break, right? And so what they'll do is the cops will know, hey, when they're doing their rounds, that there isn't something wrong. There isn't somebody that, that like, why are these cars in this abandoned lot or whatever, right? And so they'll also keep checking on it, just drive through, make sure nobody's busting in the windows, that kind of stuff. They'll still keep an eye on it for, on them for us. Um, so uh, if you are going to drive your car, best way. If you just get dropped off, don't have to worry about that. Coming back. So when we get back, well, I'd say, I'd say late Sunday night, but it's really more like early in the morning on Monday morning, right? By the time we get here and everything. We're going to land. <sighs> Plane gets in, I forget, 9 or something like that, 9.30, something like that, into LAX. On that Sunday night, we return. Um, uh, by the time we, we get done and get everything together, all the restaurants in LAX are typically closed at that point. And so it isn't too easy to get food, right? And these days you can't really easily buy food on the plane. It's super expensive for like a cracker. Um, so what we'll do is we'll go out, get our bags, get on the Roadrunner shuttle. It's gonna, they're gonna bring us back here, but we have a built-in stop at the In-N-Out at Sepulveda, right by LAX. So we'll stop there just quickly. I'm not gonna eat at In-N-Out, but we'll just buy some food, right? I'll buy you guys food or dinner or whatever you want. And then, uh, uh, we'll get onto the buses right there, and it's just really convenient, right on Sepulveda, boom, get fast food, boom, then keep going, and we'll be driving home. So um, we, you should tell, uh, so if you drove yourself, obviously you're good to go, or if you're in the dorms, you're good to go. But if you um, got dropped off, uh, you can just tell your, whoever's gonna pick you up, hey, you know, I'm getting back midnight-ish, you know, give or take, traffic and de plane delays and stuff like that. You can call him or her when we get to LAX and give them a bit of an update. And then when we're, you know, 45 minutes or so out, again, depending on traffic, you can give them a ring and just say, hey, we're probably going to be to school at, at, you know, X time. Make sense? Cool. So logistically, showing up here, 515, two Thursdays from now. And, uh, and then we're returning midnight-ish on that Sunday night. Uh, you know, maybe maybe it's a little bit later into Monday morning. Maybe it's a little bit earlier, but that's the the rough schedule. Is that cool? All right, great. Um, the house we're staying does not have a phone. We have internet, but we don't have a phone, so there isn't a number there to call. But you guys, by all means, you can give your significant others or whoever else my cell phone number if they if they just want an extra contact point. That's the that's the best way um, uh, to reach us. If if you know, obviously your guys' cell phone, but but that's that's that. Cool? All right. All right, all right, all right. So, other logistics questions? So, we get one check bag, one personal item that goes underneath like, your car with your feet. Right. Also, can we also bring like, the overhead, the one that goes on top of the overhead here? Uh, so, you, so, 
so I, the rule is uh, uh, whatever we check, we got to pay for. Yeah. And then if you guys want to bring a roller, and I guess you could do that. Um, the issue is, even though <laughs> supposedly we have two 15 passenger vans, it's kind of like throwing the dice. So sometimes we'll show up and there'll be no van. So, so about 50% of the time we show up and they're, even though we've booked them and we have the reservations and all this and that, there's, there's no van. So in general, tight, the tighter packing, the easier to just get around. But yeah, I mean, technically what, what the airlines say is that you're allowed one carry on and then one, I forget how they phrase it, but like personal bag. Yeah, so personal purse, bag. purse, yeah, yeah that kind of thing, right. Carry -on. Yes, yes, so again, as a reminder, in the house, it, it, it's a house, so washing machine works fine. The dryer tends to be, I mean, maybe they've repaired it, but, but it tends to be not the strongest dryer. You tend to kind of have to dry things a lot to get it to run it a couple times. Um, it gets it sort of, you know, non-damp kind of thing. Um, but yeah, absolutely, so we can do laundry, et cetera. And again, so the bedding situation is, is uh, uh, bunk beds um, that there'll be some sheets some years there's a lot of sheets some years not that many sheets so generally speaking what I recommend is you guys bring a blanket bring a sheet and if you guys like a pillow bring a pillow there could be some pillows there there could be not and so it's basically um, uh, you can bring a sleeping bag too so a lot of years I'll just bring a sleeping bag and, and do that um, and uh, and again the, the, the great thing is this is not like going to our sites in in you know, the Cook Islands or Alaska or anything like that, th it's a big urban area, right? So if somebody forgets toothpaste, if, if somebody really didn't have anything, like, oh my God, there's no blankets, we can run down the store and get a blanket, right? So it's not as if we're out in the middle of, of the boondocks where we can't find any, anything. So pretty much everything we could need is, is there. Um, most important thing for you guys, ID, right? Uh, so um, thankfully the real ID hasn't kicked in yet. So even if you just have an old school California license, you're still good to go. Awesome. Uh, in a year or so, it's going to be different. People are, that don't have a real ID, it's going to start to become an issue. But, um, but, but that means passport, that means driver's license, whatever that has your picture on it, official ID is, is fine. Uh, wallet, right? So I, I'm, again, um, most of the meals, except for one or two or so, I'll be covering. But still, I'm sure you guys want to get some uh, you know, presents for whoever. Obviously, you can go hit the ATM or whatever, uh, but, but, you know, wallet with you. Uh, I say the next most important thing would probably be uh, your cell phone and your charger. Your charger. So, a lot of people space on their chargers. So, um, at, the, at the house, I'll have a, a circuit breaker box thing so we can plug in like multiple things. But charging stuff is, is a non-trivial deal. We don't have a million electronics, but we do have you know, some uh, you know, GPSs and we have our cell phones and stuff. So I, I strongly recommend you guys bring a charger. If you have a car charger, I'd bring that. We, again, we can always buy one if we totally need it, another one or two. Have no idea until we see the vans what the situation is. Some years, there's just the cigarette lighter up front some years, if it's a newer van, there's cigarette lighters up front and in the ceilings and in the, in the sides and all that kind of stuff. So we'll just have to sort of play it by ear. Um, and then again, hopefully people have gotten some, some heavy pants, some Carhartts or, or similarly uh, thick pants. And, um, and then a uh, good pair of supportive ankle, not twisting your ankle, boots. And then the cheap galoshes, just a little, you know, uh, Rubber boots and uh, and leather gloves. And does anybody else? So Walker's dad sets most of you guys up with gloves. Does anybody else need have small hands and would like a pair of gloves? Are we all good? The 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 glove dealer in the back. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I got some XLs and some smalls. Uh, um, and then. Uh, yeah, and then, and then just the other thing is, um, uh, another common question uh, from years past is people say, hey, what about water bottles? You guys can totally bring water bottles. Obviously, you can't take water into the airport, but you can bring an empty water bottle. It's all good. 
Um, and then, yeah, fill it up after you get inside. I typically don't because I have too much stuff going on. I'll typically get like a, um, like a Gatorade bottle there, drink the Gatorade, and then just use that as my water bottle. But, but, but you guys are welcome to bring water bottles as you see fit. Cool. Is anybody plan on bringing a computer? Okay, great. So, so having a few more computers like that, that's great. Just enough to we, we get to the data entering phase, makes it go faster. Um, again, there is Wi-Fi at the house, so you can uh, get on. Does anybody um, uh, need to take any tests? Is anybody any of their professor who want want me to administer any midterms or anything like that? Okay. Okay. Cool. Great. Um, Cool. Oh, another one you might want to consider doing, don't have to, but seems to help, buy some posted, uh, some stamps for postcards now. We can find them there, but a lot of times we're running around and we're not at the postal office area during business hour times. And so my recommendation is sometime over the next week or so, you know, get, I don't know how many friends you have, get three, get 10, get 15, whatever uh, postcard stamps you think you might possibly use and then you just have them with you and so if you want to send postcards to people and the which one oh yes thanks so for my capstone folks your deadline is this Friday but the regular but but other projects outside of our capstone if you guys are doing something for sage uh, it's it's the 15th the, the day after we leave so best to just get it done before we leave you have to deal with it cool any other questions? Uh, we didn't yeah. like, uh, any, um, uh, so we're doing GPS stuff out there. Are we yep. going to move anything to like a GIS stuff? Like yes. Like, like I, have pro, I only have Pro on my computer, but I need like a desktop so I can get like the access. Like, uh, so s starting last year or the year before, we migrated to just using Collector. Okay. Uh, and so I think we're OK. okay. I, 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 so Emily and I are going to have a discussion this, this week. Um, yeah, so if you guys know how to use GIS, great. Um, we'll also be bringing a drone or two, um, just to, not, not hardcore, but just at least get some qualitative shots of some things. Um, uh, yeah, yeah, cool. Other questions? <laughs> I feel it's gonna be, we're having an awesome trip, you guys. It's gonna be really cool. We're doing a few things that never done before. Going to the Lake Surge, born, uh, the Lake Bourne Surge Barrier. No, no, because because it is because it is Fat Tuesday. So a lot of my friends are like not really communicative until tomorrow because they're they're so so Mardi Gras is not a day. Just to be clear, we'll talk about it in a second. But Mardi Gras is a season. So it started at Epiphany, which is Twelfth Night, and it just kind of has been going more and more intently. So um, yes, so so the rough plan is we're going to get there, start doing a little bit of work. The first day and then we have a break and we do the cooking school on Saturday back to work on Sunday and then a bit of probably a half day on Monday um, where we're doing the Lake Surge born the Lake born surge barrier and touring the levee failures um, and then we're back into full 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 press mode so um, yeah that's that's the schedule um, we'll be doing stuff all every day but um, people's schedules evolve so Cool. Rock and roll. Um, we're also going to be doing a, um, a swamp tour that we've never done before. With uh, So normally we have like some friends that are in a boat and then they run out of gas and we're like, sorry. You know, or the boat is broken, we get to get on it. This is actually a, and actually a real dude that actually really does this. So, so this is the first time we've tried this. One time we did it on canoes in a very small area. Um, and uh, that was great, but it was also... Um, didn't see much. Didn't see much. We're kind of limited. This one, we're going to go look at a lot of different areas and stuff. So it's going to be good. It's going to be cool. All right. Any other logistics questions? Awesome, possum. Awesome, 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 awesome. All right. So we're going to have a great time. Can't wait to get there with you guys. It's going to be awesome. <clears throat> Next, yeah. Um, when we get there, um, is there certain things that, other than getting something that you need? I mean, the first day? First day? Um, it, so it depends. So if, if we get there and get settled, we'll probably go out to see some music that first night. If it is just a 
something you know huge traffic jam and crud in the streets and whatever we'll just you know kind of go to bed early and get up early on friday so so probably but it, it's it's totally hard to predict Uh, yeah, so okay, so again, for, for liquids, yes, you guys can carry in those kind of things, but it ha can't be more than whatever is three ounces, right? So if it's a big can of, uh, you know, Raid, uh, you should, you should uh, put that in your check bag. Did I tell you guys my, I tell you, tell you guys my, um, my uh, bug spray story? I'll tell you my bug spray story before we start. Other questions? Other logistics questions? Yeah. Oh, I didn't send it to you guys? I okay, sorry, I'll, I'll send it tonight. Yes, right. yes, 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 yes. I apologize, I thought I sent that you. to you guys. Uh, any other logistics questions or wonder about what you should take or? All right, cool, all right, great. Um, oh, sorry, one other thing is, uh, um, is anybody planning on bringing like a, uh, something other than your mobile phone for a camera, like a dedicated camera? Okay, so just make sure you guys bring the download cables. And so I'll have my computer, if you want to download it onto there, you don't have to. But one of the things we do have some problems with is memory sometimes. So you guys might make a long video of somebody talking, whatever, which is great. Um, uh, be able to somehow offload that stuff so that you don't fill up your memory. So either you know cloud storage or bring a cable so you can connect to my computer or, or somebody else's computer. And that, that's one that we some, sometimes we get so caught up in doing all this cool stuff and post pictures, pictures, pictures. Then you're halfway through the middle of something and all of a sudden you're like, oh, my, my memory is full. Either my camera or my mobile phone or, or video camera or anything like that. I'd also recommend since in some cases we're going to be sitting there listening to people, if you guys have a little teeny small tripod, those, those are a useful thing to bring just so you can sort of record someone and, and have it nice and, and, uh, and, and still. Other questions? Okay, I'll tell you my, I'll, I'll tell you my, uh, my uh, deep story, and then we'll then we'll talk about uh, uh, culture and stuff tonight. So uh, that was uh, so years ago when uh, John and I and a couple other guys were um, right after Katrina. We were, we were going through southern Louisiana, just looking to see what was going on. So we were we were going from New Orleans to the Texas border, and we're camping everywhere because everything's destroyed. And uh, so one night we pull into almost into the Texas area. We pull into this campsite, <clears throat> and um, this uh, guy that we know, who's kind of a crazy guy, his name is Grant Gentry. Uh, he's um, so the plan is we're going to camp, and he has tents, and so he has, he has two tents. I'm like, great. So the two, there's four of us, great. Except Grant had these dogs, so the dogs were very, very cool dogs, and they were completely covered in fleas, like massive blood dogs, like constantly, like. Ha. And so, <clears throat> so we go to we go to you know camp that night, and, and we're setting up, and it's in a it's in a um, what they would call a campground. What we might call uh, like a KOA kind of thing. So hard packed dirt, you know, not not uh, not uh, yeah. Anyway, so so we're <clears throat> we're pulling up, and, and so we set up this tent. We have these tents set up and everything, and then my friend Grant uh, unzips the tent. Zit, zit. I'm like, oh, okay, great. And I grab my sleeping bag, and then in run the dogs. And they run around, they, they circle, and they plop down. I was like, ah. Uh. My friend like pulls out his sleeping bag, boom. And I'm like, whoa, your dog just sleep in the tent? Oh, yeah, we let the dogs be outside. And I was like, oh. You know, the dog's like, Hur. It's like, oh, OK. Uh, well, um, I think I will sleep outside. <laughs> and so there's the picnic tables, right? And this is, again, this is, when is this? This is like, uh, it's about six, seven months after Katrina. So this is like spring. This is, this is mid, late spring kind of thing. And so it's very warm, very humid. And uh, so uh, the kind of place that I typically go camping, there's, there's like, you know, campfires and hanging out. Uh, this place is mostly people drinking beer, uh, hooking up TVs to their RV and like cranking their TVs and stuff like that. So it's a different kind of uh, outdoor experience. And um, so we're sitting there, so, so I have my sleeping bag and I lay it down the, on this picnic table and I lay down. I thought, okay, it's fine. There's people over there screaming, there's people over there screaming. Um, and, but, you know, other than that, we're fine. And all of a sudden, 
look, 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 in rolls this big RV, look, 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 right in the you know, next camp site from us. Look, 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 pull, and they get out, and rah, rah, there's, there's, well, it turned out to be very nice people, but they were, they were um, uh, large people. And they pulled out their television, hooked up to a battery, and started to turn on the, the TV, right? I'm like, oh, okay. And they pull out their beer, and they're drinking and everything. I'm like, oh, okay, that's fine. And now it's getting very, very hot. And the sun has gone down, so now the mosquitoes are coming out. There's like a ton of mosquitoes. So it's like 90 degrees or so out. And so I had this whole problem of, I was like, you know, I was inside this sleeping bag, but then I was like roasting. And so then I'd take my head out, and there'd be all these mosquitoes, right? I'm like, oh, God. And then I'd go inside the mosquito. So it was just, I wasn't going to sleep, and it was like horrible. And then all of a sudden I hear, after a while of this, from the next campsite over, um, hey, boy, you need yourself some DEET. I was like, what? I'm like, they couldn't be talking to me, right? Boy, boy, you need yourself some DEET. I was like, clearly they're having some conversation about the TV or something like that. <laughs> and, uh, and so this goes on, and then... I realized that this person is yelling, and I kind of look, and sure enough, she's looking at me. She's like, I'm talking to you on the table, you idiot. Why don't you get yourself some deep? And I was like, oh, okay. And, uh, and so she starts walking over, and I was like, oh, you know, thanks, ma'am. She goes, oh, where are you from? Where are you from? I said, oh, I'm from California. Oh, a Yankee. And then she turns around and goes, he's a Yankee. And then all these people are like, ha, 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 ha. You don't know about the swamp and everything, right? And they're saying all this kind of stuff. And she goes, boy, you got to get yourself some DEET. It's like, oh, thank you, ma'am. Thank you. No, I, I have some DEET. And she, and she goes, um, what kind of DEET you have? I said, oh, no, I, it's like the, the, you know, can. She goes, no. What color is your can? It's like, uh, I don't know. It's like green. What color is the cap? I was like, uh, it's green. She goes, green? And she turns back, he got the green DEET. And all these guys, ha, ha, ha. It's like all this laughing and everything. It's like, what is everything? And she goes, Boy, you stupid. And then so she walks away. I was like, okay, the lady <laughs> said I'm stupid. So I'm, I'm laying down. I'm kind of like this. And all of a sudden I look back and she's coming back. And she has this big can of off, right, that has, has an orange cap. She goes, boy, you dumb. You need to get the orange deed. This is like the pure deed. I'm like, oh, thanks, ma'am. I'm okay. I have something. Boy! And then she takes it and she sprays it all in my face. As I'm talking, it goes in all in my face. All of my sleeping bag, right? So that stuff dissolves like mileage. Psh, huge crap. I'm, <coughs> I'm coughing. Like, you so stupid. I'm going to leave you this orange deep. Just it covers me in this huge cloud of toxic crap. And, um, and, uh, and everybody else is drunk and laughing. Ha <laughs> Yankee, California, right? And, uh, and so, so then they left me, and, um, it was, it was uh, a difficult night because I was like, sort of like, had to stuff my eyes and I couldn't really see and the mosquitoes were still biting me. So I ultimately went inside this guy's minivan. I slept in his minivan with the seat propped up. But, uh, but yes, that's my DEET story. So uh, if you do get something, get the orange cap, not the green cap. That's what I'm, she, she said, make you tell all you people in California next time. Don't ever let it buy the green can, buy the orange can. So there you go. So if you get something, don't get the green off, get the orange off.